Hi everyone. Did you know that India consumes 12 times the per capita energy of that of United States? And as opposed to them who are energy independent, we are still a net importer of energy, which means we import more energy than we export. But all that is changing. India in another few years will not only be energy independent but also international energy power and global climate leader. So today we will identify what could be India's strategic initiative towards energy independence and what is our motivation in energy terms which drives us towards this goal. First things first, let's define what does energy independence mean and how do you measure it? Well, the definition according to me varies as for the time period it is being defined in. In today's time, when countries such as India are still dependent on fossil fuels such as coal and oil, the definition for independence could be stated as when we stop importing more than we consume, and how much of what we consume is sustainable and green energy. But I'm sure if we were to ask this question 15 years from now, the energy independence definition would be. How much of total sustainable and green energy being consumed is manufactured in house and how much do we trade the trade of fossil fuels would surely be out of the picture then but this video is being made today so unfortunately we have to talk in terms of a strategy which involves import of coal and natural gas let's bring in the quantitative first which would define why does india seek energy independence with respect to the fossil fuel consumption patterns india's dependency can be divided into three main components crude oil natural gas and coal consumption talking about crude oil first owing to a limited domestic reserves india imports majority of its crude oil needs with imports standing at 85% of the crude oil consumption Crude oil is mainly consumed in the form of liquefied petroleum gas, high-speed diesel and motor spirit with the applications in households, retailers and transport sectors respectively. India is better positioned with natural gas as the imports stand at 50% of the total natural gas consumption. The main reason for low imports here is mainly because of its lack of use by the retail consumers and mobile sectors such as fertilizers, power and refinery. As for coal, India holds the third largest reserves of coal in the world, but even then we have to import almost 23% of coal every year. The two major reasons that India has to import coal in spite of such high reserves are number 1, Indian coal has low calorific value and high sulfur content which makes it less efficient to be used in power generation and thus making it difficult for pollution control norms to meet number 2 india's monsoons render the coal mines unusable thus hampering the mining process which does not allow the domestic production to meet the growing demand so becoming energy independent will provide india with not only in house production processing a lower trade deficit but also take us closer to the goal of net zero emissions and zero carbon border tech. So the question arises what is carbon border tech exactly and how does it impact the economy? Carbon must have its price because nature cannot pay this price anymore. In simple terms, carbon border tax is a tax nations levy on the imported products according to the carbon emission resulting from the production of that product. So developing nations who do not have the advanced manufacturing capabilities for reduced carbon footprint as compared to the western world suffer in terms of reduced imports and higher taxes on the products being imported hence achieving a net zero carbon border tax becomes very important for our standing in the world trade and also our growth so now since all this is clear let's see what could be india's strategy for achieving energy independence Now guys the strategy which we are presenting are our own views and suggestions based on the research we did so this might not be applicable from the government's more in depth application nuances so first let's answer this what are the two most important things to look for when launching a product in market well demand and supply for that product in the same sequence now putting this in terms of hydrogen economy which is the green hydrogen utilization for driving economic activity Hydrogen economy is actually a chicken and egg problem from a perspective. How exactly? Let's discuss. Indian consumers as we know are price sensitive and they see cost efficient products which require scalability and huge investments which establishes your supply. 
Now for achieving profitability on these gargantuan investments of hydrogen efficient plants, the investors require assurance of the demand, which can actually recover their costs. So first and foremost, to achieve energy independence, India needs to create demand for green hydrogen as a product. Climate के क्षेत्र में quantum jump देने वाला है, वो है green hydrogen का क्षेत्र. Now you might think demand is already there. We need energy independence, which is demand in itself. True, but this demand has to be strategically diversified and ramped up, passing from one sector to other. For example, power sector is the most important sector and a key in achieving India's energy independence. Since power sector is major consumer of coal and about 20% of natural gas. Not only this. Most importantly, if we manage to make the power sector energy free, then we can in turn make the other sectors energy free through the use of electricity to run operations in place of fossil fuel. Now look at this diagram. This diagram represents a model known as power hydrogen power model, and it does exactly what its name suggests. It uses renewable power to generate hydrogen, and then uses that hydrogen blended with natural gas to generate power or electricity. But why I am showing this? This is how every model will look like in the future, right? Not exactly. You see, this model provides a bigger solution to a smaller solution adopted by countries like India. This uses hydrogen blending with natural gas up to levels of 80%, which is far superior to the government's current 15% blending model. This, ladies and gentlemen, is your demand and supply both packed in one, and this is what India needs to adopt to achieve energy independence. Well, this along with other factors as well. You get the picture, right? Now, if you would have noticed in the diagram, there is this electrolyzer, the thing which actually generates the hydrogen, and by far is the most significant component to drive India's hydrogen economy. The question is, how will it do so? How will just the electrolyzer push us towards energy independence? Well, as we established, this is what generates hydrogen. So there you have the significance in terms of relevance. But yet another unique proposition attached to this component is its cost. These electrolyzers are the most costly aspect of the whole diagram, and a nation like India should leverage this, since we have one of the lowest energy renewable tariffs, which makes its production costlier in other countries. Hence, becoming the global hub for electrolyzer manufacturing with our production link incentive scheme can fulfill our supply aspect issue. Which will also help us in transitioning into a net exporter of energy from net importer. With hydrogen, India could be at the world's forefront, with our power sector providing support for transportation industry in the form of hydrogen vehicles, especially in the long haul commercial vehicle space for interstate transport of goods, and fertilizers industry in the form of green ammonia production, which can provide huge savings in fertilizer subsidy. India's energy independence can also be attributed to the fact that from Russia-Ukraine war, the world has witnessed how energy imports are susceptible to weaponization in times of crisis. So, a sustained fiscal and policy support will also be required to achieve the goal of energy independence. That's all for today, folks. If you like the content, do hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next episode. Mindfulness signing off.